All right, here we go. Question number 13 in our college algebra, homework number seven in my lab math. It says a few steps in the process of simplifying the given matrix to row echelon form with ones down the diagonal from upper left to lower right and zeros below the ones. That's kind of hard to maybe get a mental picture of. Fill in the missing numbers in the steps that are shown. Okay. So, they've given me this matrix here, and it says we want to produce this matrix here. And so we're going to have to do a little detective work to see what the freak they did to turn 2 into a 0, and then to turn here 3 into 0 because the first row is the same, so they obviously didn't do anything to change the first row, but they did do something to change the second row and the third row. So again, this is a lot like uh, Scooby-Doo or Sherlock Holmes, where you have to uh, kind of be a detective and figure out what they did here. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This is something called row operations. And when you're figuring out what they did in a row operation, it normally it looks like this. It's going to be some number multiplied by some row. Here, In this case, it's row 1, added to some other row to produce a new row. And again, that sounds a little confusing. But what we're looking for is we're looking for some number that we would multiply row 1 by, and then when we add it to, uh, okay, in this case, we're going to do row 2 first. So we're going to multiply some number by row 1, and then add it to row 2 to produce the new row 2, okay? So let's do a little detective work. The first element in row 2 is a 2, and somehow we need that to become 0. So what number could we multiply row 1 by? In other words, what could, what could we multiply 1 by so that when we add it to 2, it becomes 0? And the answer to that is negative 2. Okay, check me. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 makes a 0. And so this is the row operation that they're using to produce the new row 2. Now let's see if that continues to work. And let me get rid of some of my scratch work here so it's not so messy. All right. So what we want to do is we want to take negative 2 we're multiplying by the entire row 1, and then we're adding that to the corresponding element in row 2. So, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 2 makes 0. That checks out. Okay, next. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2, and then 2 plus negative 5 does make negative 3. And so this does appear to be the correct row operation. We just need to continue the row operation, okay? So the next thing would be negative 2 times 2 would make negative 4. And then negative 4 plus negative 1 would make negative 5. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's do it one more time, okay? Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. And so that's going to get us our first row. Whoops. That's going to get us our first row if we go over here to our MyLab Math. That means that the first two numbers are going to be negative 5 and 12. Okay, now, back to detective work. 
So now we're going to need to figure out what number did they multiply. Again, we're going to multiply row 1 by some number, and now we're going to add it to row 3 to produce a new row 3. Okay, so let's look at the clues. We're going to multiply row 1, starting with this number right here. We're going to multiply 1 by some number so that when I add it to 3, it produces a 0. Can you think of what number that might be? And that's right, it's negative 3. Okay, check me. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 makes 0. Okay, so that checks out. And so then we're going to need to continue that row operation and see if it continues to work. Okay, next. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. 3 plus 4 makes 7. And so that does appear to be working. And so we can continue this row operation here. All right, so next. We're going to take negative 3 times 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. And so that gets this answer. Okay, next. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. And so that's going to get our next two answers. Let's go down here to our MyLab math and see if we're right. Negative 1 and 10 and check it. <clears throat> Man, that's not the easiest thing in the world. You might want to go back and rewatch that or ask me questions in the comments if you have them, okay? Oh, no. Look at this. It's going to want me to do another row operation, okay? So now we're going to take this answer. Are you looking up here? We're going to take this answer we just worked on, and we're going to try to produce a new matrix. 1, negative 1, 2, negative 3. So the first row is not going to change. The next row, 0, 1, blank, blank and 0, 7, blank, blank. Okay, so here's what I noticed. I noticed that uh, the first row didn't change, and notice the third row, the 0 and 7, those are still the same. So the only number that I see that has changed, the negative 3 has now turned into a 1. So they must have done something to row 2 to make that negative 3 become a 1. We're going to have to figure that out, okay? So I'm thinking they multiplied row 2 by, I don't know, something to produce a new row 2. So can you think a second? What could we multiply negative 3 by that would turn it into a positive 1. Okay, the answer is negative 1 third. And we can pull up our calculator. I'll show you how we can check that. So let's check and see if we're right. Is negative 1 third times negative 3 equal to 1? It is. And so I'm thinking that's probably the correct row operation right there. And so now we need to just continue this row operation for the rest of row 2. And I'm thinking we can go ahead and copy and paste the negative 1 and 10 into row 3 because it doesn't look like they changed row 3. So that's going to be negative 1 and 10. We know that's probably going to be the same. And then let's carry this row operation out. Okay, so what is negative one third 
times negative 5. Well, if you want to use a calculator, go ahead. That's going to be positive 5 thirds. And then what is negative 1 third times 12? Well, if, again, if you need to use a calculator, go ahead. But that's going to be negative 4. And then we're going to plug those numbers in down here and see if I lied to you. 5 thirds and negative 4. Whoops. And I'm thinking that's still going to be negative 1 and 10. There you go. Wow, okay, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments about this particular problem, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.